All right, guys, today we're going to look at a couple of tools here. The um, gradient mesh tool, we'll start there. We may have looked at this a little bit before, but we're going to go a little deeper into it now. Anyhow, first of all, let's open up just a square here. And we're going to fill it with whatever color. I'll fill it with red. Then we're going to go find the gradient mesh tool. It's located right here. See the mesh tool? Go ahead and click that. And you can put this on anything. It does not have to be a square. It could be a circle, any kind of shape. But watch what happens when I click one time here. It's going to establish this anchor point and give me a vertical as well as a horizontal line. I can put one here, here, wherever. And it kind of does the same thing over and over again. Now this establishes areas where I can now put color. So I'm going to go Window swatches and open up my swatches palette There's one, and that gives me all these swatches these are actually ones that uh, Illustrator establishes for you I can use these or I can create my own I actually prefer to create my own um, but for the sake of this let's just use these so let's just grab like a white here I can do a couple of things I can add it to one of the squares like this or this time I'll grab yellow I can put it on one of the points, like so. You'll see the difference. So on the point, it, you know, it goes in all four on the square. It goes in the square, plus it goes a little bit outside the square as well. Now that I have this, I can adjust these anchor points. And that can make all kinds of really cool shapes. I can get the direct selection tool, come in, and move the points or move the anchors, whatever I want to do. Um, it gives you very painterly effects. It's really pretty cool tool. Again, I don't use it a lot. Um, something you know like this, I may go with Photoshop with. But uh, you can get some really neat background texture stuff like that. And like I showed you guys earlier with the realistic Illustrator things, you can uh, make things look very painterly with this. Okay, so that's where it's located. That's what it does. Play around with it, you know, from time to time, um, and put it in your arsenal of things to do. Okay. All right, so let's move on a little bit. We've looked at that one. Now let's look at the one I do use a lot. This is the gradient tool. Now this one does kind of the same thing. It's also a gradient, but not quite to the extent. So what we have here is, command Y, a rectangle that I've added a gradient to. We'll just start from scratch. I'm just going to delete that one. And let's make a new rectangle right here. And you see it automatically popped up because... I have it set for this little gradient right here. I can make, let's just make it a red star with. Okay. And we'll grab our gradient tool and we're going to click and drag. Nothing happened. Go to window, gradient, and we need to open up our gradient box. And the default one is this one right here, black and white, and see what happens. As soon as I clicked it, I made it black and white. Now with the tool, I can go like this, 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 and then once I have these established, I, oops. Go back to the tool, sorry. I can actually move these, or I can extend them. I can take the color box, look at that, the black, so really notice the difference. You know, it's much tighter between the black and the white here, as opposed to this. By extending the box, I even make it, you know, more of a gradient. Okay, so you can do lots of cool things. This also can be done here in the gradient, so again, I can move the white over and watch what happens. You're going to get almost like a little black and white line. You know, there's not much of a gradient at all. So this is where you could come in and play with colors, though. I can drag a color here, red. Might be able to drag a color to here. I'm not sure. Nope, got to do it here. I can double click it and make my own color. Let's go yellow. Let's say I want to add some colors. Just come down here, click, boom. But you need this gradient box open right here. Make that black. Red. Oops, sorry. Click the color. Double click it. Make it red. Double click it. Let's try that again. There we go. Actually, I have one, two, three, four of them there. If you don't want one, just take it, slide it out. Boom, it's gone. Very cool. And there's a trash can. Delete, stop. Um, now, if you look up here, it says linear. This is the type we have. You see, it's on a line. It goes from yellow to white and then a little pink in between. You can change that to radial. And now we're doing yellow to red to white, but it's going in a circular, circular pattern. Okay? And again, same kind of things. You can make your circle bigger, smaller, 
a lot of the same features with the linear, you know, come in here. So you do some really cool stuff. That's what we had earlier. You, um, if you look down here in my fill, you can see I've actually got this gradient. It's showing, instead of like showing a red or blue, or whatever, it's showing the gradient. So if I like this gradient and I want to use it later on down the road, I can just come down here and add it. So I'm going to just click, oh, okay, we're good. I'm going to click on it. Should be able to drag it to my swatches palette. Well, maybe not. There it is, and I can put it in my swatches palette. There we now we have a gradient. All right. So this one's uh, very very useful. We use this one a lot. All right. So eyedropper tool. It's just like Photoshop. Those of you who use Photoshop, all eyedropper tool does is sample colors. It doesn't select colors. It samples it. And here's what happens. So go get your eyedropper tool and click on any color that says red and notice it changes in my fill box now that color is ready to be used for something else see what happens it'll give me even look at that it even finds these little gradient in between colors it samples these colors so if you want a color to use later on this is how you do it use this uh, eyedropper i think the keyboard shortcut for that is is i yeah the i well, that makes sense right eyedropper tool so definitely i don't use this one too much um I use it in Photoshop a lot more than I do in Illustrator, but there it is. And the last one I want to show you guys is the blend tool. This is a really cool tool. It does a lot of different things, and we're going to look at it today. So, scale up here. Let's just let's see. There we go. Let's um, start with your name. I'm just going to type out. I'm going to type out name. N A M E. And I'm going to make it about that size. I'm going to paint it red. Let's see some real quick. And it's still live type. Now check this out. We'll make a copy of this. By holding the option key, I can just click and drag and make a quick copy. And now I've got two names here. All right. Um, I'm going to go to, I'm going to click, hold shift, click both of them. And watch this. Object, blend, make. Watch what happens. You put another name in between, only one. Go back to Object Blend, and then go to Blend Options. And now this time, hit Preview, and go to Specified Steps. And you're going to see what happens. I'm going to put 50 on here. Now watch what happens. Ah, so now what it did is it put 50 names between the name. So name is here, name is here, and it put 50. You can see them right here if you zoom in. If you wanted to, you could count these little ridges. If I hit Command Y and Keyline, you don't see it. It hasn't been outlined yet. But I can do some really cool stuff with this. I could come here to this bottom one, and let's say I hold Shift and scale it down. Now check that out. Now this time I'm going to come to the top one. I'm going to copy it, paste it in front, and I'm going to fill it with black. And now watch what happens. Whoops. Nope. I'm just going to paste it this time. There we go. I'm gonna, let's try it this way. And I'm going to fill this one with black. And if I set it perfectly on top of the other one, it would give you a, like a three-dimensional effect that you have a lot of control over. It's actually pretty cool. Uh, you saw earlier, just a second ago, how that went from black to red. Check this out. So if I actually change the color to this top one, they're right now this one and this one are both red. Change the top, top one to what? Oh, hang on. It's got both of them. If I just select that one and I change it to black, watch what happens. Oops, got to select it first. Just double click, change to black. And there you go. Look at that. Actually, if you look at it, the one down here is the one on the top. And this one's on the bottom. So that's why it's doing this funky effect. I can reverse that. Go back to Option, Blend Options. And somewhere, Specified Steps. Uh, how do you do this? I cannot remember that one, so we're just gonna. Here's a way to do it. You might have to start from scratch. So it might. It depends on which one you made first. So maybe we won't mess with that right now. Okay. All right. Blending also does shapes. What we have here. I made this with a blend. So check this out. Um, we're gonna just delete those. We'll take a square, and just for fun, I'm going to make another shape. Let's make a polygon, and we'll change that to a different color. 
So hold shift. And object blend make. Look at that. It blended one shape to the other. And the cool thing is you can move these around. All right, you can do some neat stuff. And again, if I go to key line, nothing there. You can't see anything. Now watch this. If I go object, expand. Ah, now this is all those steps in between that made this. So these are now, but you can imagine this was going to take up a lot more um, space on your document because now you have all these points. So keep it like this. You don't have your file will stay smaller. Let's see here. Go to object blend. Look at some blend options. Oh, there. When we said about reversing it, here it is, guys. The reverse spine, reverse front to back. So if I would have clicked on that when I had the name, that would have worked. That's what I was looking for. I just thought it was under blend options. So I'm going to go back to blend options. So you get specified distance. You can do all kinds of different things. Preview. I don't mess with that one. I don't mess with smooth color really either. Specified steps is really the one I mess with the most. So that's what I want to show you. Oh, well, I had 254. Watch this. If I change this to five, watch what happens. And you get things like that, which could be some really cool stuff. Specified color. I'm not really sure what the specified distance and color do. Let's just don't even mess with those right now. All right. And you have a different orientation. I never really mess with this much either. Just want to stick with steps. Okay. So. Yeah. New stuff to play with, get some cool effects, uh, try to put these into your design. All right, so this will be found in your folder, and you can um, play around with these if you want to. This same little uh, gradient mesh, gradient to dry dropper tool, blend, whatever thing that I got up here at the top. So you can find it if you want to play around with some of these and try to get these in your design. All right, thank you. Bye.